Hey Jackal! In today's video, we will take a look how to take an image, well, we will take a video and split it into atoms, actually particles, and have those particles in the 3D space and position the camera so we can actually see the object and then we will line them up with the actual video so we can make a transition, which will be in the 2D space. Now let's get digital and we'll do that in the winch resolve. To make this effect you could use the actual video clip, which in this case can be this one, maybe even this one. So let's go with this one, but I will not make the composition in the video, I will make it in the fusion composition. So right click in the media pool, make a new fusion composition, put this onto a timeline, extend it, so zoom in, so we can extend it. And you can also put this over the video clip that you want to use. So the fusion composition is as long as the video clip or maybe shorter if this is just the transition that you want. So with the fusion composition selected and the playhead over it, we can go into the fusion page. Now I will zoom in a little bit so you can actually see the nodes. First I will go to the media pool and use the video clip that I have just shown you, which will be this one, but we will just start off with the basics that we need. We'll use a fast noise node, which looks like this. We will use a saved rate, maybe 0 0.2. You can increase or decrease this value. So we now have an animation going on. Now the resolution is a bit big, so we can scale this down. So we can go to the image section, uncheck the auto resolution, maybe 500 by 500 is good enough, we will see. So that is it for the moment at least. Now what we need to do is use some particles. If you don't have a custom toolbar, which by default will look like so, you will have access to particle render, which is what we need. But we also need two more nodes. You won't find them here, so shift space, type in image, p image emitter, so we want this one, and the other one will be shift space, type in custom, p custom. Connect this tray like so, and we can display this on the right side. Nothing is visible at the moment, as you can see. So you have to connect the fast noise to the P emitter so we can actually see something. If you have previously connected the particle render to media out, as you can see now it cannot be connected, but if you have connected it, you will have to select it, go to output mode and change the 3D to 2D. Now in the particle render this is what we see, but we can now actually connect this to the media out. We still don't want to do that, but that is where you can change that. I'm using Alt, I think this is Option on Mac, and the middle mouse button to scroll around. Now if I zoom in, we can see the particles, but they are tiny and we have a lot of them. So go to Particle Image Emitter and lower the density, maybe 0 0.2 on both the X and Y, so now we have a lot less particles. Also go to style and change the style from point to a blob. But you then have to go to the size and decrease the size. By how much? Maybe 0 0.01. Zoom in a little bit. Maybe half of this. So maybe 0 0.005. Just like so. If you wanted you could also change the variance slightly, so maybe we can also do that. But now we want to affect this particle field to go in one direction. Currently this is just a plane as you can see. So we want to affect this using the fast noise node. And to do that we will be using the P custom and we'll be using the particle section. In this case we have three axes, so we have the Y is green, X is red and Z 
is the blue one. So first we have to switch this. So I will go to P emitter, transform, and I want to rotate this on the X axis. And I will rotate it by minus 90 so that the Z axis points up or actually so that the Y axis points up. And now in the P custom, we will adjust the position Y. By how much? Well, if we just type in A value, we'll have a small difference, but nothing amazing will happen. If we want something amazing to happen, we have to use a color of the channel. So in this case, because we're using the fast noise, we can use either the red, green, or blue channel, or a combination of them. So the red channel is simply R, then you have the green, and you have the blue. But because the color of the fast noise is white, basically the values are all the same. As you can see, now because I'm moving the blue channel, this is being changed. Another way how you can affect the size of this, you could multiply the value, maybe 0.5, if you want to put this down a little bit, and if you want to put it back on top of the center like it was, we could also maybe do zero, minus 0. Point, let's see how much, maybe minus 0. Point if you wanted this plane to be in the center. But you could also go to the fast noise and adjust some options like the contrast. This will flatten it down. If you adjust the brightness, this lifts it up. And why is that? Well, if you look at the image on the left side, which is this one, so white means that the particles will be positioned up and if they are black, they will go down. So this is what also contrast does. When we have the spikes, and it looks like so, the white color are basically these spikes, and where we don't have anything, basically black, we also don't have anything. If you adjust the scale, you can get some kind of ripple effect, at least if you view it from the top. So this will basically depend on how you want to view this. So this could be an interesting background effect. Now what happened, we don't see anything. Basically, it has to do with the particle image emitter. If you go to controls, we have the lifespan and it only lasts 400 frames. So after this point, we don't have anything. Basically, in this composition, I would need to have 816 frames for the lifespan of the particles. Now, of course, this can get intense on the PC, so I suggest you right click on this bar, disable the high quality, disable the motion blur, also right click down here, purge the cache, so that the memory doesn't get clogged up. Go to playback, you can also delete it here, so delete render cache, click on all, and you can also go to the timeline proxy resolution and set this to a quarter. So the quality, as you can see, is basically gone, so we don't have all of the ripples that we had before. So let's see, is half good enough? I think half is good enough, and the memory is now basically the same. And the playback will also be a lot smoother, so I suggest you do this if your system can't handle it. So we have this, it looks decent from the top, not so much from the sides, but what I found that is also decent looking is, let's see, it was under the velocity, not the velocity itself, well you can use this if you want. In this case, the particles move right along the x-axis, so if this is something that you want, this is how you can do that. A view from the top. But what I want is for the particles to move up, so I will use 
but this is not the Z axis as one would expect. See, the blue arrow is pointing up, but this is actually this angle that we have to use. So 90, the particles are now still stationary as you can see. Now you can use velocity to lift them up, but they will still be stationary. Where the magic happens is if you use velocity variance. As you can see, if you have this set to zero, everything is pretty much predictable. If you use the variance though, it looks like everything is jumping ground. Now that's all good, but what does this have to do with the image that we'll be using or the video? Well, we do have the video. It doesn't last as long as the composition for some reason. Why is that? Well, in the media in one, as you can see, you can set the global in out and the out was not set to the last frame. So now we have the whole video. The resolution of it though is 4K. And we'll see how this looks like when we connect it to the fast noise. And this will simply be connected with the merge node. So if you position the camera to the top, so it looks down on the particles, you should see the image. But when you move the camera down, that image disappears. Now admittedly, this video is also not the best for this example, but what we can also do is go to P custom and adjust the multiplication. Maybe instead of 0.5, we'll multiply this by 0.25. This will squash everything down. So the lower the value that you multiply with, the closer the particles will be. So for this, what I want to change is maybe the density. If we lower it, you won't see much, but if we increase it maybe to 0.5, we get a lot more clarity back. But because the fast noise is only at 500 by 500, we only see a section of the video. I could maybe put this to default like it was. This is my project timeline. So 2560 by 1440. I could maybe do this at 1920 by 1080, which is half of this original video resolution. And this is what that can look like. But this is also now a lot more intensive on the system. As you can see, it's already using 38 gigabytes of memory. And what we can do is maybe now lower the density back to 0 0.25. And now all of a sudden this plays a lot nicer on the PC. And if I position it down, this is how that looks like in the 3D space. So if you go back to the P custom, maybe multiply this back by 0 0.5. Does it look any good? Maybe it could. You would have to check from different rotations what looks good. So you can set the camera and animate it. If you want to turn this into a transition. Now in this case, I guess 0 0.15 was good enough. What we can also change maybe to get a better effect is the style. Maybe instead of using a blob, I could use a bitmap. Now for the bitmap, I will simply use a rectangle and make sure that it has the same width and height. So I could also use a background node and change the size of it. So maybe, let's see, 10 by 10 pixels. So let's see if I put the background auto resolution back on and simply change the rectangle width and height. This should be the size of my pixels. Emphasis on should. So yeah, 
This actually is the size of my pixels. So instead of using just simple rectangles, you could make your own shapes. And speaking of shapes, we could go to effects, tools, shapes, and we can actually use angons. So use an angon, but we also need to use an S renderer so we can connect it. And we now should have different shapes. So we have that. Once we're happy, we can now connect this to media out, right? Connect it. No, we cannot. Do you remember why not? Because this is 3D, we have to set it to 2D. And now we can connect it. But as you can see, it's not actually what we wanted or what we saw previously. So we do need a 3D camera. We also need a render node. Disconnect the particle render. Set the output back to 3D, use a merge 3D node, and connect the particles and the camera to it. So now we can connect it like so. Why we have done that is basically so we can connect everything up, see the 2D composition, but also see the 3D composition. And as you can see, the camera is pointing in this way from the center and basically it is missing all of the particles because all of the particles are outside of what the camera actually sees. So with the camera selected, transform, we can rotate it down. So this is on the X axis, minus 90, and we'll position it up, which in this case will be on the Y axis and simply position it to where you want it to be. Now, as you can see, this may look a lot different than it did before. So you may have to change around with the size of the shape, the particle position, maybe even the density. And while you're at it, you could also add some effects to this. Maybe you want some, let's see, do we have some chromatic operation going on? We can totally do that. Though this tool might be studio only, but what you do have is the glow nodes. So you can add glow. This kind of smooths it out. And you can also combine this with soft glow to make it really pop out. But we can always go to the practical emitter Maybe in the size controls, you can now change the size of the particles. So you will have to play around with the settings to get the look that you want. So in this case, I would have to decrease the density because we have too many particles and we have them overlapping. And this will now also speed up the process. And I think this actually looks nice. Though maybe still a bit too many particles. Let's see, 0.05. I think this is a lot more manageable, especially if you disable the full timeline proxy resolution. Though in this case, you don't really see what is happening, at least not in real time as it will once we're inside the edit page and viewing the timeline. But in any case, what you can do at this point is to finally take the original footage, which is this media in, and I will delete the angons. So take the media in footage, use a merge node at the end. The media in will go to the back. So with the merge selected, control T, so we switch between the two inputs. We have to scale the merge up so it fills the whole screen. So one point, Five in this case, you may need to scale it up a little bit more. Now this would be a simple solution, but actually what I want is first to have this effect visible and then reveal the original clip. So to achieve that, I will use a background node, set the alpha to zero, 
connect it to a more rich node at the back, connect this media in, in the front, and then connect this to the more rich like so. As you can see, this is now off. I will have to scale this back down to one. Now I still see the original image in the back, which is not what I want. So I'll simply go to this merge node and animate the blend. Though in this case, as I see, I do want the alpha to be black. Do I? Maybe not. So I'll set the alpha to be zero. Once this is in the edit page timeline, this will be black anyway. But if we make this into a transition, the video will show nicely beneath it. So let's go maybe to frame 200. This is because of all of the glows. I can also disable them. And now in this merge node, I will simply keyframe the blend. So maybe from 200 to 260. So we have three seconds of transition. Blend the background video in and do the same for the merge down below. Except in this case, this will be zero. And from frame 200, this will be one. So we'll have a transition like this one. That's one way how we can do it. Though maybe we actually want to see the clip beneath it a bit longer. So I'll go to keyframes. Select the effect, so in this case merge 3 and simply move the two keyframes forward a little bit. So now we have this effect. The video clip beneath it will come in, we'll still see the effect, but then it will fade out. Now this is how the effect looks like with the half timeline proxy resolution. If it is set to full, Will the effect still be the same? Probably not, but we'll have to wait a bit. And this is what the full effect looks like, without the glows enabled. So I will also enable the glows, go into the edit page and wait for this to render out. And that's it for this video. If you found it helpful and would like to see more DaVinci Resolve content, subscribe to the channel. I'm Simon and until next time Jacko, keep it digital.